Hello everybody, my name is Steven and welcome back to the Storytime channel. Without wasting any time, let's get into our stories of the day. Drunk Guy Decides Our Kitchen Is A Pizza Place It was a warm night in August when this took place. Crickets were chirping, kids were snoring, and my bestie and I were hanging out in her kitchen, chatting and eating potato chips. Yum, chips. We were having such a great time, before we knew it, the clock read just past 2 a.m. Oops, phone rang. Now you have to understand, where I am from, if someone calls after 9 p.m., there better be bleeding, death, or police involved, or we get really cranky. Friend answered the phone with dread written all over her face. Drunk guy on the line saying, I wanna order a pizza. Friend, face quickly morphing to annoyed, you have the wrong number, and hung up. Simple, right? Oh, but we wouldn't be here if it were. Phone rings, I answer, slightly growly. Hello? I says I wanna order a pizza. Now, this was before cell phones. I know, I know, the dark ages. And my friend didn't have caller ID. We already told you wrong number. This is our house, not a pizza place. Stop calling us. I hung up and we checked the kids to make sure they were still sleeping. Phone rings. We run back to the kitchen and I get there first. Hello, what do you want? I want a pizza. Listen, a-hole, you have the wrong freaking number. Stop calling us. Slammed it back down. Phone rings. Friend says, oh, heck no. So she answers. Bob's Pizza, how can I help you? Pepperoni? I start to grin. Yeah, huh? Extra cheese? No problem. You want free garlic sticks? Be there in half an hour. I'm dying laughing. That was the last time he called. We think he passed out waiting for his mythical pizza and garlic sticks. To this day, if I see someone I know on caller ID, I will answer Bob's Pizza. If this drunk and or high person kept calling your phone wanting to order a pizza, how would you handle it? Let me know in the comment section down below what your creative way of replying would have been. Costco Karen I work in an office with fairly high security. We have to wear a lanyard that says staff when we're at the office with our picture and name tag attached to it. I tend to be a pretty forgetful person so I wear mine all the time and only remove it once I get home and put it on a hook beside the door so I know I won't forget it. I also usually go shopping after work. So one day I'm at Costco doing my shopping and I run over to another aisle as I realized I got the wrong types of something or another from the frozen section. So I exchange them and I'm walking back towards where my boyfriend is with the cart. Then I hear fingers snapping and a woman calling, here, here. I turn around because I'm curious and lock eyes with her and she gestures me over. I don't recognize her, but I also don't want to be rude, so I go over. She's on her phone. Can I help you? I ask her. How much is this? I don't know, I tell her, kind of confused as to why she's asking me. She looks at me like I'm an idiot, her eyes bulging out. I'm on the phone, she says. I'm just standing there holding my mini quiches or whatever, wondering why she called me over and who she is. I'm also wondering why she's telling me why she's on the phone when I can see that perfectly well. Okay, I tell her and start turning around to walk away. She starts tutting, which I'm really confused by and I turn back around. She's looking at me expectantly and honestly, I've been working all day and this is confusing the heck out of me. So I just tell myself to ignore her and I start walking away again. She does a weird tut slash hissing sound, but I ignore her and keep walking. She runs up to me with her card and taps me on the shoulder. Why aren't you helping me? She whispers screams at me. Why would I help you? I ask her. I'm genuinely so confused by this entire interaction. She points to my lanyard that says staff and it finally clicks into place. Oh, I say. I don't work here. I swear the look on her face. She was horrified. She apologized to me like six times and I was finally able to go back to my boyfriend where he told me I got the wrong thing from the frozen section again. Oops. I think the biggest takeaway is that this Karen actually apologized six times and let you go. That's better than like 95% of the other stories that end up on the subreddit. Covidiot tries to touch me. I've never had an I don't work here experience in my life until yesterday. My partner and I were at a home improvement store where the employees wear maroon smocks or aprons. I was wearing a black tulle shirt and a bright sky blue jacket. 
He was wearing a blue sweater and jeans. We both were wearing masks and gloves and talking about whether the planter we were looking at would sit well on the rails of our deck. All of a sudden, a woman wearing no mask and no gloves comes within three feet of me, almost in between us, and starts asking questions about a dead plant she's holding. I politely tell her that we don't work there and she starts cackling wildly, reaching out to grab my arm. I hopped backwards to avoid her and curtly say, don't touch me please. She rolls her eyes at me and scurries off with her flatbed cart and supposed dead plant in what I assume is in search of someone who actually works there. All the while, my partner is looking at me with what I imagine is a look of total shock, but I can only see his eyes, which were huge. We were surprised enough at the level of audacity this woman had in trying to grab me that it took us a second to get back to what we were discussing. I'm just super grateful she didn't actually get a hold. I know this post is pretty tame in comparison to some, but I was definitely at a loss for words. People not understanding boundaries during this time is ridiculous. And plus, it's one thing to not respect boundaries, it's another to have no gloves and no face mask and not respect boundaries. That's like one of the most disrespectful things you could do to a person right now. Just wanted a salad. So I'm a hairstylist, and a lot of times when I leave the salon to grab food or run an errand, but plan on coming back, I will leave my apron on. It very clearly says, Paul Mitchell the brand of products I use on it, and I dress fashionably under it so it's pretty easy to tell that I do hair. One day I ran over to a deli slash grocer in my town to grab a sandwich and salad. I put in my sandwich order and went to their salad bar to make my salad. There was only one guy working behind the counter that day, but it wasn't terribly busy either. I was finishing up making my salad when someone tapped me on my back and said, uh, are you almost finished? Assuming they just wanted what I was in front of, I quickly replied, yep, just give me a second, and got out of the way. I stood closer to the sandwich counter, and the lady followed me over and stared at me but didn't say anything. It was really awkward as she just kept getting closer to me and sighing. I ignored her as I saw my sandwich was almost done. They called my name, I grabbed my food and gave her a little shrug as I was walking by, as she was still being weird. I think when she saw the front of my apron and the clips in the pocket, she finally realized that I didn't work there and I got the usual, Oh, I didn't know you didn't work here. I just smiled and left. Not that exciting of a story, but I was finally able to go back to the deli and get lunch. Yay for reopening things. And it made me laugh to think about again. Thankfully, in my situation, I'm so bad at handling social situations that I probably wouldn't be asking for anybody's help anyway, so I would never end up in this kind of a situation. I don't work here, but you do? This happened about a year ago. I was with my significant other at the tech section of Bullseye, and we were sort of goofing around and admiring the newest lineup of iPhones, complete with ooing and aahing at how expensive everything was. The section was pretty empty. Out of the corner of my eye, I see someone approach us and start asking a question. I read this subreddit frequently. I love sending supportive and indignant thoughts to posters who've been approached by entitled shoppers, and was eager to put what I'd long visualized into action. I was also eager to continue ogling the display of devices. So you can probably guess what happened next. Stranger mumbled something that sounds like a question. Me, cheerily distracted. I'm sorry, I don't work here. The stranger looks blankly. My significant other, visible confusion. The stranger stands there for a bit longer. I've already turned back to the display, and it takes a few seconds for me to realize what's happened. The stranger is wearing a lanyard, a red collared shirt, and now that I think about it, he might have been asking about some sort of cellular plan. Oh my god, you work here. We left pretty quickly after that. Later on, my partner told me that they wanted to clear things up, but I responded so smoothly that they decided not to. Poor employee was just trying to do their job and sell a phone plan. Oops. You thought this was your one chance, you were so eager. You thought you executed it perfectly. Oh, how the turntables. You do not work here, lady, but I'll buy you a drink anyway. I was about to enter a pub when I fell over. Didn't damage myself, just slightly embarrassed and shocked. Got myself a beer and sat at a table to recover. A woman walked over. Asked, are you okay? Did you hurt yourself there? I assumed she must be staff, had seen me fall, and was being duly diligent in inquiring into my well-being. Yes, I said, I'm fine, I wasn't watching my feet, taking care to speak clearly and coherently in case she thought I was drunk. 
She sat down at my table saying, Oh good, I thought you might have been injured. Oh no, I'm fine. Really, I am, I said. She continued to sit there. Odd, I thought. Should she not be going back to her job in the pub? But there was someone else serving at the bar and there were almost no other customers, so perhaps she was just bored or something. She continued to be solicitous and we chatted for a bit and then I slowly concluded that she didn't work there. I wasn't quite sure what was going on, but I then realized that someone inside the pub wouldn't have seen me fall over outside because the windows were fairly high and the pub entrance was up some steps, so she must have followed me in from the street. I came to the end of my beer quickly, first drink of the day, wanted another, so I asked if she wanted a drink. Yes, she'll have a large Chardonnay. Expensive, but I got her one anyway. She gradually steered the conversation to my personal circumstances, whether I lived with anyone, what sort of place I lived in, what I did for a living. I still couldn't work out what was going on and just continued to string it along, wondering if it was a religious sect recruiter maybe. Then she said she didn't have anywhere to stay. Can I stay with you tonight? She was quite respectably dressed, well made up and did not look like someone who was living on the street. This did not compute, so I just didn't respond. She changed the subject, then after a bit started asking if I could lend her some money. Again, I didn't respond. After chatting a bit more, and when I came to the end of her beer, I said, Okay, well, thanks for the chat, and thanks for inquiring after me, but I have to go now. And went to the pub across the road for a few more beers. If I was OP, I would be pretty confused too, and I'd be pretty sketched out, and I would want to get out of there without them anywhere near me. Who knows what this person who looks completely dressed up, perfectly fine, says they need a place to stay, would actually want. This is going to be short. Awesome mother. My mother lives next to an at-home pet groomer and it is cheap. So that means that there is usually an American Karen. They park in my mom's parking spot all the time. They think it's my mother that is the groomer and yells at her for bad service. But before it gets into a physical fight, she points them to the actual groomer. They don't bother to ever move. My mother owns a bunch of different size car wheel lock things. I don't know what they're called. Then she puts the lock on the wheel and goes straight inside. Then she watches a show she likes and the Karens never fail to bang on the door to make it feel like it's a nuclear war. She takes her sweet time and says she will be done in a minute, as mothers always exaggerate with time, 30 minutes. When she is done, they are obviously visually angry. Then my mother tells the Karen it will be 100 bucks to get it off. My mother always has extra money from her second job to spend. So I'm not sure what country this is from, I don't think it's clear, but it's pretty obvious that these Karens should not be parking in a parking spot that belongs to someone else. I feel like there's a few more details here that's also lacking that would help for clarification like, is the spot marked? Or how would they know that a parking spot belongs to somebody? And I guess the legality of putting a lock on someone's car and demanding a payment. But with that being said, that's all the stories we have for today. Let me know in the comment section down below which of these stories was your personal favorite and why. And thank you all so very much for watching and listening to the Storytime channel today. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to the Storytime channel and don't forget to turn notifications on so you'll never miss an upcoming video from us. Thank you all again so very much for watching and listening to the Storytime channel.